Welcome to another episode of NBA 2K19 Roster Edits with Remember the Great Sports. This one is going to be very unique. I am going to show you the all-time roster edits for the Seattle Supersonics, okay? And I'm showing you the 1995-96 Seattle Supersonics because they're the only Supersonics team on the game. Now I'm going to have a few cuts in this video so I just ask you to bear with me uh, as this video is going to take a lot of explaining to do and this is going to be a lot of roster building so this one might be a little bit long so let's get right to it so you can see the Seattle Supersonics uh, this is located on the roster if you go to the all-time team second sections you know on on the game after you get through the all-time player rosters you get to the all-time team rosters and if you just scroll down to 95 96 that's where you will find the Seattle Supersonics now I'm gonna tell you this right now the first three players are the only three guys that are gonna stay on this team everybody else starting with Hersey Hawkins Hawkins is a great player however he's not in the top 15 Sonics of all time same with Perkins. So Hawkins, Perkins, McMillan, Irvin Johnson, Eric Snow, David Wingate, Vincent Askew, Frank Burkowski, and the two fake players. Completely release them off of your roster, and I will show you where you get the players for this roster, also with a few creations. All right, so our next episode is going to be the Oklahoma City Thunder. The Oklahoma City Thunder, for some of the maybe just viewing this channel for the first time and do not know, were the Seattle Supersonics until they relocated to New Orleans and became the New Orleans Oklahoma City Thunder until they finally relocated to Oklahoma City. Now, what NBA 2K19 has done in previous NBA 2K games is they have combined the franchises together, which is perfectly fine. The Seattle Supersonics are indeed the Oklahoma City Thunder. However, as a purist, like I did with the Charlotte Hornets and New Orleans Hornets slash Pelicans, I like to separate the two teams and play as the separate two entities instead of them being commingled together. That's just my preference. And I'll show you why, because I feel that I built a very, very solid Seattle Supersonics team, and I also built a very, very good Oklahoma City Thunder team. So... I may share a video in the near future with the two of them playing each other. So hopefully you guys stay tuned for that. If that's something you want to see, definitely say it down in the comments below. So let's get down to it. All right, so the first players that you need to grab off of the Oklahoma City Thunder all-time roster are Ray Allen at shooting guard. So he goes to the Seattle Supersonics team. So to do that... Um, I'll show you how to do that here in a second, but we'll just go through the players real fast. Ray Allen, uh, Gary Payton can stay. Uh, Sean Kemp, you want to trade this Sean Kemp for the other one because his rating is higher on this team than it is on the other team. So, Sean Kemp for Sean Kemp. Make that trade. Spencer Haywood goes to Seattle. Dennis Johnson goes to Seattle. Jack Sigma goes to Seattle. Richard Lewis goes to Seattle. Dale Ellis goes to Seattle. X-Man Xavier McDaniel goes to Seattle. Lenny Wilkins goes to Seattle. And like Kemp, you want to trade this Deltlip Shrimp for that Deltlip Shrimp. And Serge Ibaka, forget about him. So we are going to basically decimate this Oklahoma City Thunder roster, but in the next video, we'll put it back together. So stay with me. All right, so again... We go to the 1995-96 Seattle Supersonics, and this is the updated roster that I'm going to go through with you. Uh, I made all of those changes that I just mentioned with Oklahoma City, but I also added three players to the roster. Again, I just want to note up in the corner the 95-96 Sonics, and here's why I chose to use this team. So if you go to Edit Player, and I'm just going to go through this really fast, and you go to Body, there is the Seattle Sonics, uh, Supersonics jersey. So other than trying to replicate it offline, you know, getting it offline, it's already on the game. Why not use it? 
you know, and I know it's not the retro Sonics, but it's better than a generic team. So we're just going to gloss over that and we're going to go to the starting lineups. Okay, so your starting point guard is Gary Payton. No doubt about that. All right, so your starting shooting guard is the great Ray Allen, one of the greatest three-point shooters, if not the best three-point shooter ever to play in the NBA. Ray started out his career with the Milwaukee Bucks, but after a few seasons with Milwaukee, he decided to go to Seattle. And as you can see, when he got to Seattle, or OKC, according to this game, he averaged over 23 a game and probably had his best numbers of his entire career as a Seattle Supersonic and was one of the best three-point shooters in the game. So with that being said, Dale Ellis uh, was a great shooter. He wasn't really known for his defensive ability, but he was a lights-out shooter. And he played both the small forward and the shooting guard position. So in this instance, I chose to change Dale Ellis's starting position from shooting guard to small forward, so he's the starting small forward on this team. And he played actually a couple times for Seattle. Uh, he uh, played for Dallas first, but as you can see, these are his numbers as a Seattle Supersonic. 24.9, 25.8, 27.5, 23.5 points per game before he was traded away. But he did return for a couple more seasons toward the end of his career. This guy is instant offense. I don't know why you wouldn't want him, <laughs> you know, in, in your starting lineup. This guy... This team features probably some of the best shooters ever in the history of the NBA, and we'll get to another one here in a second. Uh, the next guy, the Rain Man, okay? Uh, for whatever reason, uh, the Sean Kemp is better on the OKC roster than he is on the 95-96 roster, so I recommend you trade those two out, and that gives you this power forward, Sean Kemp, and that puts him ahead of Spencer Haywood on the starting roster. Uh, Spencer Haywood, a great player, a Hall of Famer. I personally enjoy playing with the Rain Man myself with his dunking abilities, uh, also rebounding. However, Spencer Haywood was a great player. If you prefer to use Spencer Haywood over Sean Kemp, that's completely acceptable. As you can see, Spencer almost averaged 30 points a game in the 72-73 season for Seattle. So that guy could score, just like Sean Kemp could. However, I prefer to use Sean Kemp. So either of those can go either way. And Jack Sigma at the starting center, he just was recently elected to the Hall of Fame. Um, he is one of the best to ever play for the Seattle Supersonics. Um, a big man that was, as you can see, almost averaged 20 points a game and pulled down 10 to 12 rebounds a game for a very long time for the Seattle Supersonics. Then took his talents to the Milwaukee Bucks. Congratulations, Mr. Sigma, on making the Hall of Fame. Uh, your sixth man, we talked about him already, Spencer Haywood. Uh, he could play a power forward and also a small center if you need him to. However, we're going to talk about the backup center here in a second. Uh, Xavier McDaniel, very, very good player. However, not in the same ilk of Dale Ellis. However, if you, if you prefer defense, I would put McDaniel over Ellis in the starting lineup. However, I prefer to have Ellis patrolling the three-point line where... McDaniel is an adequate scorer, but he just is kind of lost in the shuffle on this team. Probably is probably the fifth option on this starting lineup. So I feel McDaniel's better course coming off the bench, giving you some offensive abilities along with Spencer Haywood, playing some good defense. If you're matching up with this all-time Sonics roster and say, I don't know, he's guarding Kevin Durant of the Thunder, I might put McDaniel in over Ellis for that simple fact because McDaniel can play some defense. Uh, backup point guard Lenny Wilkins, no doubt about that. Uh, he's in another video on the all-time Hawks video. Uh, however, uh, being a great player that he was, definitely belongs on the all-time Sonics roster as the backup point guard. Uh, this is the first created player, Fred Downtown Brown. Now, this guy doesn't get the nickname downtown just because he can throw up a few shots. This guy was one of the best premier shooters in the uh, NBA. He came into the he was in the league before the three-point line and the first year of the three-point line, this guy shot 45% 
three-pointers behind the three-point line, leading the league with a 45% three-point percentage. This guy could shoot. This is the guy that, if you have Dale Ellis on the bench and you bring this guy off the bench, watch out. I mean, you, you got shooters galore on this team. This team's actually pretty exciting. This is almost... This is almost like the Golden State Warriors and the Splash Brothers. You have three to four guys that can launch threes on this team, which is pretty exciting. Uh, Dennis Johnson, um, he makes the all-time list for another another team. Uh, he's on about three of the all-time teams, only because he kind of bounced around a little bit throughout his career. Um, he, um, you know, he was great in many different places. And I feel that he's a nice point guard slash shooting guard option, you know, to have on the bench, you know, backing up Gary Payton and Fred Brown, you know, in, in the one and two guard position. Uh, now, here's your backup center. And a lot of people aren't going to know this guy. Bob Rule. Uh, Bob Rule was a player from the 1960s uh, in college. Uh, he uh, played for the Seattle Supersonics for about five to six seasons, and he averaged, you know, almost 20 and 10 points a game, you know, for those five or six years that he played with them. I want to say one of the seasons he almost was at 25 points a game. Uh, I don't know if there were some injury issues or something that came about after his career with the Sonics, but this, for a five-year stretch, this was one of the most dominant big men in the game although he was an undersized big man. He played during the era when you could get away with a 6'9", 6'10", center. Um, I don't know if it would translate that well in today's game. However, I think he's a very adequate center as a backup center on this team because the Sonics traditionally did not have big man, um, big time, big, you know, centers, you know, and still kind of don't to this day, to be honest with you, with the Thunder. So, good backup center right there. Uh, Tom Chambers, uh, this is the second team he's on. Uh, he um, played for the Phoenix Suns uh, for about half of his career, but he started out with Seattle, uh, won an All-Star Game MVP, I want to say, with Seattle. So, he was a very, very good player. He can play the, the three or the four. Um, He's kind of like the Kevin Durant mold. He's like 6'10", but he can play power forward or small forward. Um, not as good as Durant, but a very good mid-range shooter. You know, very good player to have on the bench, especially as your 12th man. Uh, finally, um, I, I'm, I'm going to show you all three of these at the same time. Uh, these guys are kind of all interchangeable. I feel that you could go with Richard Lewis. You could go with Deltlet Shrimp, or you could go with Gus Williams. Uh, Gus Williams, though, gives you a fourth point guard, so I wouldn't really recommend going with Gus Williams. Gus Williams was the point guard. He's nicknamed the Wizard because of his ball handling skills that was on the 1970s Seattle Supersonics teams, the one, the one that won the championship. Gus was the captain, the point guard, whatever you want to call it. However, I just can't put him on the 13th man because I had too many point guards then. Um, Detlef Schrempf, um, I recommend swapping them out again. The 95-96 Shrimp is not as good as the, the Oklahoma City Shrimp, so make sure you trade those two. Uh, he's a small forward, power forward, great player. I think eventually he'll probably get in the Hall of Fame as well. Um, you know, played some very formidable years with the Sonics, uh, went on to go to the Indiana Pacers and have some success as well. Uh, very good player. However, I stuck with Richard Lewis, uh, a young Richard Lewis. Richard Lewis, uh, you know, came up with the Sonics, had a very illustrious career. As you can see, the first couple years were a struggle. But after the 2000-2001 season, he really hit his own, you know, averaging about 15, 17, you know, a couple seasons there, over 20 a game before he went as a free agent to the Magic. Um, he's a tall, lanky, power forward, small forward top. He can hit a three if you leave him open. You know, the guy shoots around 39, 40% from the three-point line. So he's not going to be the guy that gets in there and gets you 12 rebounds, but he is kind of a finesse player, you know, and 
I feel any of these three, whatever your preference is. You know, um, I know there's somebody watching right now that says, well, where the heck is Slick Watts? I, I, I understand. Slick Watts was a great, great player, but he's not over Gary Payton, obviously, is the point. It's very hard to put him ahead of Lenny Wilkins, also a Hall of Famer at the point. And it's very hard to put him ahead of another Hall of Famer, Dennis Johnson, at the point. And finally, Gus Williams. So if you want Slick Watts instead of Gus Williams on your reserve list, you know, that's totally up to you. However, I feel that having five point guards on the team isn't really too fruitful. So finally, who coaches this team other than Lenny Wilkins? This is probably the most horrendous photo of a coach that I created. I could not get a good photo of Lenny Wilkins. This is the closest as I could get, and it is not good at all. Uh, like I've said in other videos, I hope NBA 2K20, they let you create your own coaches to your liking, and they just don't give you these standard coaches like they do. So, coached by Lenny Wilkins. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. I have never seen anybody create the Seattle Supersonics team uh, other than custom rosters. I looked at the 95-96 rosters. Well, it's already on there. Why not use it? So stay tuned for the next episode. Uh, I'm going to go through the Oklahoma City Thunder. And after we get through the Thunder all-time roster, I'm going to warn you, the Thunder's bench is not that great. <laughs> Only because their franchise history is not that old. So all the, all the stars are in the starting lineup, and there's just not much bench depth. But um, I think I might have a uh, one of my first videos of me playing, or I might let it play on its own, the Seattle Supersonics versus the Oklahoma City Thunder. I think that'd be a great dream match. So, hope you agree with my selections. Uh, if you don't, that's the, that's the love of the game. You can change it to however you want. That's the great thing about NBA 2K19. Thanks for watching, and hope to hear your comments below.